See what you guys think of Yasser Sirwan. Chess has what is called its own vocabulary. How many of you know the word vocabulary? I do. What it means. <laughs> Very good. Vocabulary is all of the words that you know. Chess has its own vocabulary. Just like in cookies, there's ginger cookies, fig cookies, chocolate chip cookies. Right. right? And <laughs> okay. And words. So chess has its own vocabulary. You guys, I really like this guy a lot. I know a lot of people pick on Yasser because he's sort of like Mr. Rogers. He has that very gentle way of talking and he talks very specific and slow. And if you're an adult, you might feel like he's talking baby talk to you. Okay. Just listen to what he's saying, because I think sometimes I'm even finding out 55 years old. I find out that I didn't learn any of these fundamentals. You all, I just jumped into the game and started playing. You know, how could I ever get anywhere if I never even knew the basic fundamentals? So if you guys are really young, right, if you're five up to, say, 12, if you're in that range right in there, um, a guy like Yasser is really somebody you want to listen to. You know, take notes. Don't, don't passively listen to him. Actually write some things down. See what you can get from him. If you're an adult, just sort of, you know, just let it kind of sink into you, wash over you. Um, it's kind it's kind of pleasant to hear Yasser explain things so simply. And in our old mind, sometimes we get crusty and we have a way uh that we talk and a way that we do things, and you know, this kind of style might turn you off. But but sincerely, just listen to the guy. I have not watched this video. Who knows? Maybe I did years ago. If I did, I don't remember it. What I'm gonna try to do is do live um uh reviews, live responses to what I'm seeing. Anyway, let's get back into it. So for me to spill what's in my mind into your mind, I use words. I'll show you what I mean, but I also try to be very specific. Very important. I like to use a chess vocabulary. Okay. One of the one of the best vocabularies in chess is what we call the algebraic system. Okay. The and algebraic what this means algebraic system. I'm not even sure where the word comes from. The algebraic system, what it also does, it gives us a very, very specific <clears throat> address for every square. <clears throat> so this square, we understand to be a one, correct? Yeah. A one. This square, this is the a file. This square we understand to be a two, a three. You guys are getting better. I'm telling you guys, at 55 years old, I still can't hardly do this. If I had, I mean, I could do it if he points to the board, obviously. I'm just saying, um, if somebody tells me what the move was, I have to stop and close my eyes and visually try to see the board to imagine where the piece is that's being referenced. So this isn't, I mean, it seems kind of babyish, but this is actually hard. Very good, very good. Good kid. So when we start to use algebraic, we start to be very specific. If I move my knight, what square is that? G1. F3. F3 to knight G1. You guys F3. say it together now. So I just move my say it with knight the kids. to F3. And what squares does the knight attack? Four. Four. Correct. G5, G5, G1. Do you guys remember in our lesson we talked about how the chess pieces move? Remember we talked about the knight? Let me get my little drawing tool out. If you didn't see the video, we said that the knight moves like in an L shape. Right? He can go down and oh, whoops, down and over. He can go up two and over one. He could go over two, up one. Everybody see that? He can go up one, over two. 
You guys getting it now? This way and this way. You see how powerful this piece can be, especially if he's in the center of the board. <clears throat> if you can get him like in here or here in the center of the board, he can cover lots of squares. D4 and D2. And D2. E1. And G1. G1. Good the job. Knight controls eight <laughs> squares. Eight. When I went knight G1 to F3, it now controls eight squares. Let's go back. How many to did it control position. before? From here, don't call it out. Just think about it for a moment. How many squares does the knight attack? Okay, you guys, let's work on it right now. You guys point it out. I'll get my pencil tool ready. Okay. You draw on the board. Where can the knight move? Remember what I said? Over one, up two, or over up one and over two? Up two, over one, however you want to do it. Okay, you see it? Up two, over one. Up two over one, up one, over two. Do we have any other squares? Can the knight go any other to any other squares? All right, so it looks like I think we've identified three. See what Yasser says. Four. Four, that's amazing. Is it true? Mm -hmm. Which squares? That one, that one, that one. Do it, kid. Four, right? Huh? Oh, wait. That one, that one. Three. <laughs> three. Yeah, Good that job. Was three. <laughs> so, we start to understand that when we bring our pieces off the back rank, these are the back ranks, our pieces. So, you guys remember if the, if the pieces go up, Right? If we go up all the way like this, these are called files. Okay? It's important. Files. And if anything is going this way, we call these ranks. All right? You guys are going to want to know that. That's going to come up. I promise you. To start to control more squares. Okay, this is a very, very, very important aspect of chess. The more squares my pieces control, the less squares your pieces control, the more opportunities I'm going to have to make good moves. Now, we all know what this is. King! Queen! Very good. So in chess, we say that we... <laughs> sorry. We say that the chessboard is our battlefield. Okay. And we divide the battlefield into certain sectors. For example, we say that I have my space, you have your space. My space, we say that the chessboard has 64 squares, correct? Yes. Okay. So we're going to draw an imaginary line across the middle of the board. We can call this the equator if we like. It's an imaginary <laughs> line. But we say that these 32 squares mm. are whites. I've never they seen it to white. like that. These 32 <clears throat> squares, they belong to, black. belong to black. But then okay. we divide the board into more sectors. Okay. Okay. We notice that the king is on the E1 square and the queen is on the D1 square. Right. We draw a square. You guys remember we went over the other day, too, about how to set up your board? Does anybody remember? We said that the white square, white on the right. Okay, so if you're setting up your board, white on the right. Does anybody remember that? Okay. <laughs> we draw a square of 16 squares, and we say from E1. Oh, yeah. And remember, your king, I'm sorry, your queen is always on its color, right? The queen, he's kind of covering it up, but here's your queen. You see how your white queen, or I guess these are kind of yellow pieces, but your white queen is on a light square. So you wouldn't want to set up the board and then put your 
queen on the dark square. To h1, to h4, to e4, back to e1. Do you all see the square? Yes. That's white's king side. Is there four squares? Four or sixteen? Four. Sixteen. So you count all of these squares. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I meant like like the big squares that you like like that. Yeah. Oh, you're making this four. Correct. There's four squares. There's this is white's king side. This is black's king side. Correct. Now, notice the queen is on D1. We're going to draw a square from D1 to D4. Okay. To A4, to A1, to D1. See, this is brand new for me, too. I've never had anybody explain it to me like this. I learned chess when I was like 25 years old. I just got out of the Navy, and one of my buddies was learning chess, asked me if I wanted to play. I sat down with him, and he taught me how to play. That's it. That's the, that, well, that was it. That was my training, just like that this white so i'm telling you even if you're here and you're an older person like i said i'm 55 you might be younger or you might be older than me but start at the very beginning i'm enjoying this actually going all the way back to the beginning learning all the fundamentals because i know it's going to help me get to that rating of 2000 queen side correct yeah. okay now why is this important imagine that you and I are in a restaurant. Hey, incidentally, you guys, I was thinking, you know what you should do? You really should set a goal for yourself. Um, maybe you want to start with 30-minute games, and you, your first um, rating you're going to try to get is, you know, 600, 500. You know, set a goal first. I don't play a lot of live games. I really need to, and I'm going to. Um, but, you know, I think setting a goal for yourself, what I've done is I've set 100 point increments. So right now I'm at a 792. So the next time that I play and I win, I should be into the 800s. Okay. So now that I'm in the 800s, the next goal I'm going to hit is 900. See what I'm saying? So 100 points at a time. So let's just say it takes um, a month to go up 100 points, right? I mean, think of that. That's pretty good. And and there's 12 months in the year, so that's 1,200 points plus where you are right now. So if you were rated 500 and you could achieve 100 points a month for the whole year, see what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's a good, cool idea, I think. So try it out. That's what I'm going to do. Together. And we don't have a chess set. But let's say we're having a conversation where... Oh, by I the way, you guys, not to plug stuff, but if you'll see in the video description, there's actually a set that we used to use um, back in Arizona when I lived there. Um, it's a travel set, and it's a link in my video description. Yes, I'm an, an Amazon associate. I don't know what they pay me, a couple bucks or something. But anyway, it's there if you guys want it. They're triple-weighted pieces, so they're really nice to play. You can just roll it up and take it with you to school. Or if you're an older person, you know, take it with you to work, take it to the park. It, it's um, it, it really is nice to have. He said, how did you do? And you said, I won. How did you win? I checked it, checkmated my opponent on the queen side. So mm -hmm. even though I don't even have the game score in my hand, you've already conveyed to me an idea. The next thing we say is that there is what we call the center there are two central files. Okay. Anybody could guess what they are? Yes, young man. Does everybody remember what the file is? Files, remember I just said? Files. It's a file. What are these? What are these? Ranks. Good job. Correct. These are the center files. And that makes a great deal of sense. Why? Because they're in the center of the board. Now, chess grandmasters refer to four squares. Four squares, and they're called the sweet center. The sweet center. Those are the four squares that... You guys following that? This is really important. Um, I'm, I'm still just learning this now. These 
four, right here, boom. Right? And then these outer squares, on chess.com, we actually saw a video where he kind of went over this. And then we've got this outside. And the way they described it on chess.com is this this is sort of like the mountain top, right? So if you imagine like um oh I, I first I was just thinking about South America, what's it called? Those old ancient ruins down there. Oh darn it. Anyway, doesn't this kind of look like a building? Like if you're looking from above, looking down on it, this this spot right here would be the pinnacle, the top of the building. And then these uh, this section down here is the lower level, right? It kind of goes down like this. See what I'm saying? They've got to climb up the hill to get me in here, right? All right, let's let's let us let Yasser continue. I think he's doing a great job. I've already learned a lot. Anyway, I've never heard anybody split the board up like that and talk about the queen side and the king side that way. Never knew it. Ultimately, we, tr we try to control in the opening in the middle game. Why? Because when we control the sweet center, do any of you play tennis? Oh, you're good. I you have, but player? I'm not good at I'm it. I'm not so good, but I like to play tennis. <laughs> and I like it when I hit the ball with the sweet center of my racket. I hit the ball directly with the strongest part of my racket. Well, that's what the chessboard is our battlefield, and we're trying to control the sweet center. So I'm going to do today something very, very different. I'm going to play a game of chess against the entire class, okay? But what I'm going to do is very special. I'm going to tell you why I'm making the moves I'm making. Okay. Right? You don't have to tell me your secrets, but I'll tell you mine, okay? okay. So, first of all, <coughs> your, the class is going to be white. Yay. i got to give you guys a little edge, right? I'm going to give you a little edge. And how many of you would like to play this? Because, guys, if you don't know, most of you might know this, but if you're white, you start off right off the bat, you're up, okay? So, if you have a chance to play somebody and they ask you which color you'd like, you want to choose white. This is your opening move. That's pretty good. How many of you would like to play this one as your opening move? That's pretty good. How many of you have a different opening move that you would like to play? Okay. The E4, <coughs> the E4 crowd won. Okay. This is a very good opening move. There are many, many good opening moves. This is one of the most popular. Bobby Fischer said, E2, E4, best by test. That was how he described this move. Let's think about this move for a moment, and why is it so good? First of all, you Watch control guys. two squares, right? What yep. squares are they? Yes, young lady. Precisely. Yep. Precisely. See, that's how cool chess can be. Everybody get it? You guys see how this little pawn, it looks like it's just a pawn sitting out here by itself. But if you land on that square or that square, the pawn can take you, right? You can be very specific. Oh, shut up, dogs. D5 Go on. and F5. One of the other advantages of this opening move that you've just made is you've opened up the diagonal for your bishop, correct? Okay. When And you've opened up the diagonal for your queen, correct? When you started the game, notice that the bishop and the queen could not move. With this opening move, you freed the bishop. Now, I have my space, you have your space. How many of my spaces, does, it's a trick question by the way, how many of my spaces in my sector of the board, my space, with this move, how many of my squares do you control? And math. Two. What's your answer? Two. Uh -huh. Three. What's your answer? Zero. Two. Now, for those of you who said two, you know the young lady.
All right, you guys, every now and again, you might hear something in the background. I have two Labrador retrievers. The doors are open, and if they see something outside in the woods here, they go barking. So, apologize. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the young lady has already said two, but that's at least two, because this bishop controls how many of my squares? Wait, what was the question? Now, for those of you who said two, you know the young lady, sorry, yep. the young lady has already said two, but that's right. at least two, Okay. because this bishop controls how many of my squares? A bunch. Yeah. One, two, three, four, um, five. One. Does it control this square? No, I thought you were talking about the middle. Oh, I meant the bishop. So how many of the, my squares does that bishop... So you guys remember again? Here's what he's asking you. He's saying the bishop... Remember how the bishop moves? The bishop moves on a diagonal like that. Do you guys see that? And this is why this move, Bobby Fisher said, this is the best move, best by test. The reason why is because as soon as you moved this piece to E4, you let two pieces out. You guys see that? Those two pieces can stop on any of those squares where the arrow line is. So just by moving that one piece. Now, had he moved this piece to D4, the only piece he let out is this piece. Make sense? Okay. Six of my space, of my space. Two. So hold on. We have two plus two equals. Four. None of you got the answer right, and that's not even the right answer. Five. Correct. It's five. Why is it five, young lady? Queen can go up to. There, yeah. H5. So with that opening move, you control five of my spaces. Now, what I like to do when I was young, and I still do it today, is I like to build a fortress. Okay, what do okay. I mean when I build a fortress? First of all, we all know that checkmate ends the game, right? Yeah. Yep. So I want the safest king I can possibly have. So I like to build a fortress. How do we do I'm that? I'm going to guys? play here, and I'll show you how I build a fortress. How do we build With a fortress? With this move, how many squares of yours do I control? No. Three. Three? You guys have eyes I don't have. I recognize that my bishop controls two. This pawn. Four. No, this pawn doesn't control any of your squares. My queen. So what's he asking here? I mean, obviously, you guys understand the same principle, right? When he moved this piece up, this piece is now attacking these two squares. If anybody lands on those two squares, this pawn will take them out. Okay? And then what ends up happening here is he only let one piece out. His queen can only go to there. That's no good. His king can only go there, but he doesn't want to move the king. He only let out one piece. Right? We go one, two, three, four, five. Right? Plus the one he's already on, but he controls those five squares. Okay. It's only two. Okay. Your turn. Uh, yes, young man, what would you like to do? Um, queen H5. How many of you would like... Now, you guys, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, when you're young, especially when you're young, um, adults do it too, but the queen is the piece that most kids love to move. They want to get the queen out and have it fight. And just because it's so powerful, they can't wait to use it. But a lot of times what ends up happening... They'll keep moving that piece around all over the board, and they never develop their pieces. Okay? They never get developed, so they don't have anybody to help the queen checkmate the king. So you want to be really dubious about moving the queen out first. Um, we haven't even gotten there yet. I don't know. Hopefully, Yasser is going to get into this. But typically, what they say is you're going to move knights before your bishops. Okay? You get your pawns out 
And then the next thing you do is you want to get your knight out and you want to get your bishop somewhere. Okay? To play queen to h5, raise your hand. Leave that you queen like alone. Queen h5? Yeah. You like to every? Would you like to play queen h5? Okay. I do. You you do too. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Now I'm going to share with you what the queen on h5 does, because probably many of you know the idea of bringing your bishop, and then with your bishop here and your queen here, you're mm. going to have a direct attack. But when I was a beginner, I loved my queen. <gasps> it was the cat's <laughs> meow. Right. I just, I, when I lost my queen, I was so <laughs> forlorn. How many forlorn. Of you know the word forlorn? <laughs> How about if I said sad? Yeah, there you go, that's better. <laughs> I was so sad when yeah. I lost my queen. Right. Okay. So I like to develop my queen early, but this is actually a beginner's mistake. Why? Because the queen's so powerful, whenever I attack your queen, you're going to have to move her, right? Yeah. Young man, what would you like to say? Um, even if you did... Um, attack your queen? No, even if uh, we did get you in check at that... Area, yeah. yeah. You could just move your king to where your pawn was. That's true. That's true. But I'm not even going to give you the chance to get to that area, also called F7. And young men. You to take the queen. Correct. See, when I attack your queen, because it's so powerful, I'm usually going to attack it with something less powerful. So you're going to have to move your queen. So I'm going to bring my knight to F6. Oh, no. Yes. yes, and this is called... Everybody see that? Okay, see what he did? He developed, and look what he did. Down one, over two. He's attacking the queen. Do you see that? Now the queen just moved out there. Now the queen's got to move away. It's got to try to find a square to get to that's safe. Look at the other thing the knight did. Now we can go down two and over one. And we could win the pawn. So this is called a fork. Okay. Whenever you can get two pieces like that with one move, it's called a fork. It's a fun move. Do you know what this is called in, in chess? Say it. No, that's an attack. This I just is told you guys. against your queen. But it's also... And pawn, correct. It is a fork, actually, correct. Fork. I am attacking your queen. It's a double attack. A fork is a double attack. But it's also called gaining a tempo. Gaining a tempo. What do I mean by that? When it's my turn to move, I'm on turn, right? I, I make a move. It means I, I used a tempo. But when I brought my knight out, I attack your queen, and I'm going to force you to move the queen. The class, what would you like, to, where would you like to move your queen? Yes, young man. Come on. Queen A5? Queen A5, that's a square. Okay, we get that. <laughs> B5, that's a check. Uh -huh. Ooh, how many of you like to play queen to B5? Check. Excellent. No, 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 no. 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 You attack us again. No, no. You would like to play. Oh, that's. I, I, I have another idea. I have another idea. What's that? The bishop to B5. Okay. So we've got two candidate moves. Okay. Do you know what it, the word candidate means? No. 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 Yes, young man. May I think the. That means the two pieces control the checkmate. Well, a candidate is kind of like an option. You have an option. But you have lots of options. You could move your knight, you could move your pawn, but your queen is attacked. Queen so is one attacked. suggestion. Right, you guys, remember that. Now, <laughs> the, the other, I think it was a girl there, she had another idea to go to B5, which is check. 
right? You wouldn't check the, the king, right? You move out here to here. Now we're threatening the king. Only problem with that, you guys, is, and I'm sure he'll get into it. All we have to do is move the pawn up and block you from attacking the king. And now we're attacking two pieces. The pawn is attacking the bishop and the knight. It's attacking the queen. So now you got big trouble. Deal with the problem you have first. When your king is, queen is under attack, you want to get her out of there. Was to go check. You can still attack us with your pawn. Correct. That's, That's what I'm going to do. If you're attacking with something but not a knight, then you can block the attack. Very Correct. smart. Very smart. And she the other option that. was to play bishop. So you could check me with your bishop or your queen. How many would like to check me with their bishop? How many would like to check me check me with the queen? Ooh, that's a that's a tough call. Let's try it again. With the bishop? That's a lot of hands. With the queen? <laughs> Less hands. We're gonna let you guys play bishop. Correct. It's a bad move. Why? Because the knight's still attacking the queen. That's right. After after I block the check, your queen. Right, but remember guys, you're in check. When you're in check, you have to handle the check. You can't take this queen right now because you're in check. You have to deal with that first. But he will, and then he'll still be able to attack the queen. So let's watch. It's still going to be attacked. Now, I'm going to block the check with my pawn because I'm very clever. Oh. <laughs> now I'm attacking two pieces. I'm attacking your bishop, and I'm attacking your queen. Yes, young man. Oh, bishop, take the pawn. Pawn. Well, if you take my pawn on c6, you win a pawn. But then I recapture your bishop, and who who got the better deal? We're negotiating. Yay! Why? Okay. Correct, because a bishop is worth three pawns. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. You guys, remember in our videos we talked about that? The bishops and the knights are worth three points. The rooks are worth five points. And the queen is worth nine points. Pawns are worth one. So so I I did a real nice trade. I like you people. You're my favorite people. Now your queen is attacked. Where would you like to move your queen? Would you like to bring it here to put me in a pin? How many would like to do that? Wow, that's exciting. How many of you would like to retreat with your queen? Very calm, safe. I have another idea. Another idea. What's another good idea? Uh, wait. Now don't forget, I'm also attacking your queen and pawn. Yes, young man. Did you guys hear the clue? He's attacking both of these pieces. So if the queen moves away, maybe we could move it to a place where it could help to defend our pawn. See what I mean? We've got to move. We're stuck here. He's going to take us on the next move. If we move away, he's probably going to take this pawn. So how could we do, how could we make a move that could maybe protect that pawn? What, anybody see that? Couldn't come here, right? Because he would just take us. Could we come here? Protecting? Yes. Could we come all the way down here? Protecting this pawn? Yep. We can do that. Okay, so you're suggesting that when you bring your queen to this square, this pawn protects my knight. If I move my pawn... You guys notice what's happening right now? Look how many pieces Yasser 
how's on the board right now? One, two, and three. Look how many pieces you've got. One, two. And all you're doing is just, you've moved the queen to here. Now you got to go over here. Then now this piece, you just ignored this piece. So now the knight's going to take the pawn. You know, what is the queen doing exactly? Pawn, you're going to capture my knight, right? Well, thank you for sharing that. That means I'm not going to move my pawn. <laughs> I don't want to lose my knight. Okay. <clears throat> Another move you could. Which one? Hey, is guys, that? I want you to think of something too. When you're playing, let's say you're playing white, okay? I want you to start thinking about what is your opponent going to do? Okay, he wants that queen. This you just keep putting that out there, and in his mind, he wants that piece. What's a way that he could attack the queen and make it move away again? Anybody see that? What's a piece? Let's use our smallest piece we can think of. There's a clue. The smallest piece we can think of to kick that queen out of there, attack it, and get it out of there. Does everybody see it? How about this? The pawn moves up one. Now we've got another piece developed. We're attacking the queen. Okay? I think the author is doing a great job. Okay, queen to f7. You mean to capture the pawn with check? Okay. Could what's wrong with that, guys? Anybody see what's wrong with that? Can the rook take? No. About the bishop. Bishop only moves that way and it's blocked in. It can't it can't even get out, so it can't do anything, and it's not on the right square. Knight can't do anything. Can this knight get over there? Nope. Queen? Can the queen do anything? What about this bishop? Nope. Hmm. How's he going to get rid of that piece? Did you guys think about it? Look at this, guys. All he's got to do is use his king. Remember, the king can move one square. So the king just comes out and takes the piece for free, and you just lost nine points and probably the game. Could I take your queen? Yes. Yes. Would you like to lose your queen? No. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, we're going to let you play this move. And under normal conditions, I would capture your pawn very happily. But I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show well, you what I like you. to do, which is to build a fortress. I play the move G7, G6. So what's the idea? Does anybody have does anybody know what the idea behind this move is? Yes, young man. Uh, um, we do see when somebody checks it. Yes. Uh, space to go. That's correct. I I but what this move does, it's a, it prepares my fortress. What I want to do in uh, the 16th century how many know what the 16th century means? 1500s. Yeah. In the 16th century, the best chess players in the world were Italian. They all came from Italy. And they created what they called the Fianchetto. So when Guys, I hate to um, correct Yasser on this, but Hikaru does it too. I had to look that word up. Um, it's spelled with a C-H, Fianchetto, and so most people say Fianchetto. Uh, but the Italians don't pronounce it that way. They pronounce it with a k, k sound, a K sound, k, k, right? So it's actually fianchetto. But the idea is to basically get the bishop there in the corner so that you can castle. When I put my bishop on the long diagonal, the long diagonal, that's called a fianchetto. So I play g6 with the idea of fianchettoing my bishop. Go ahead. Your turn, what would you like to do? Would you like to develop your knights? Would you like to defend your pawn? Would you like to take my pawn? Oh, yeah. No. You like to take my pawn? Then I will take your queen. No. Okay, okay. 
So, how many would like to develop their night? That's a good... How many of you would like to push your pawn forward? Would you like to do that? Okay. How many of you would like to develop this night? Yes. No. Yes, okay. That's a solid majority. We're going to go with the solid majority. Guys. Now after knight f3, I play bishop Let's seven. look at this for a second. He's going to let them do this, but why do you think that that was not the best move? Why would you want to come here? This is the threat. Everybody see that? He's threatening to take the pawn. We got to help the pawn. We could have moved our pawn up to protect. We could have moved our knight to c3 to protect this pawn. Do you guys see that? I want you all to really notice that. Super important. If this piece is hanging, you don't just leave him. Would you leave your buddy behind if he was going to be attacked? You're just going to let him die on the field? No. We're going to come over and give him some help. All right. Let Yasser continue. Seven. Castle. Okay. <laughs> so I create my Fianchetto. Now, how many of you would like to castle? That is a very, very good move. Now, I'll just tell you a quick story. I had, castling is very, very good because it brings your king into safety, correct? Yes. Yes. I had a very good friend. He passed away, I'm sad to say. His name was Edward Gufeld. And he was a chess grandmaster from the old Soviet Union. Hmm. And he was the trainer of the Soviet women's Olympic team. Yes? And he was very nervous about his team, how they were going to perform, because there was a great deal of pressure for the women to win the gold medals. So he would come to the games late, and as he would enter the playing hall, he would look for a Soviet person and ask them in Russian, how are our women doing? And usually the answer was they were doing fine. And then he would ask the next question, have they all castled? <laughs> and if the answer was no, uh -oh. he would say, he'd shake his head very sadly and say, we have to train harder. <laughs> you guys, hold on, I want to see if I can get a picture of that. Let's see, I'm going to hit this little icon, see if it takes his picture. That's funny. No, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, about castling. We haven't even gotten to castling yet, you guys. And it sounds boring. Like a lot of you aren't going to want to do this, you know, move my pieces to the center. And then I got a castle. You, I was like that too. I think all of us are, you know, there's something about, I don't know if it's just Americans in general. We don't tend to listen to people. We want to do it our way, right? I'll find my own way. I'm going to move my queen out. I'm going to, I'm going to forget all of the rules. I'm not going to listen to anybody. I am so smart. I'm going to do it my way. I can just promise you all, I've done that. I don't even know how many times. Played the stupidest moves because I didn't understand the fundamentals of the game. And I can just promise you, if you want to start off in the beginning and be really good and accelerate quickly, you listen to what he's saying. Develop and castle. And even though we haven't gone over it, Let's just do it real quick. If you're watching the video, I'll show you. He it doesn't sound like he's going to go into it too much. But this king right here, it's called a castle. He has the option, if, as long as he's never moved, okay? He can't be under attack. Like if this knight weren't here, the queen would be attacking him. He can't castle, okay? So remember that. But if he's not under check, what he can do is in one move, watch this, guys, in one move, he can move over two squares. When he does that, the rook knows, hey, you're exercising your right to castle. And this rook will flip all the way over here. And it's done all in one move. Isn't that pretty neat? So you can get your guy in the corner. And now you've got this bishop protecting you. You've got this knight protecting some squares around you, got your queen, right? 
We'll get into Castly more. We haven't even covered that yet. We're just getting into learning how to set up the board and how the pieces work. So castling is very good, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to castle. Okay, now let's compare for just a moment. Let's compare for just a moment. You've castled, and I've castled. But I've done what is called building a fortress. Why? In front of my king stands the bishop, nicely protecting. Besides my king stands my rook, nicely protecting. And besides that, I have a knight, like a sentry, a good guard. And I have a beautiful pawn shield in front of my king. Compare. You castled, you're safe. Your rook is next, your knight is, and all your pawns are safe. So you have a good pawn shield. I have a good pawn shield. The young man made an interesting observation, though. Also, by my fee and shadowing, if we take away my bishop for a moment, my king also has a square. At the moment, at the moment, you're vulnerable to back rank checkmates. How many of you know what a back rank checkmate is? Very We haven't good. gone over that yet, guys. You guys should be teaching this class. What am I doing? Okay, now it's your turn. And keep in mind, the opening has not gone very well, I'm no. sorry to say. I'm a pawn, I have a, I have a bishop for a pawn. Your turn. How many of you would like to develop this knight? Raise your hands. How many of you would like to advance your pawn so you could... Yes. How many would you like to make another move, a different one? What's a different move for uh, you? Rook E1. Rook E1 is an excellent move. You're defending the pawn that I am attacking. You've already castled, so you've already brought your rook into play, so it will cost you a tempo. You'll be moving the same piece twice if you move your rook. How many of you would like to move with your knight again? Guys, I want to cover that really fast. Okay. <clears throat> tempo. You're going to hear that used a lot. What it basically means is you're, you're allowing him to move basically like more often than you have, right? You're 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 making Pete like that queen move. He's moved the queen now once, twice, not developing any pieces. And and look at you know, look at black over here. Look at how he's so developed. He's moved here. One, two, three, um, this, four, plus his pawn took a bishop. That's five. Right? You've got the castle you've done here. One, two, three, four. So you see how white had the advantage in the beginning, but black is up. He's got the tempo. He's got the he he's the one calling the shots now. White's not dictating how the game goes anymore. How Hopefully I explained like that right. Your pawn? Okay, so if I make this move, does that have your support? Yes. Yes? Okay. Now, in this moment, remember what I said about your queen and how powerful it was? If I attack your queen, I'm developing my pawn, correct? Yep. I'm moving my pawn from its original position, so I'm developing my pawn but I'm doing it with a gain of tempo. Tempo. Because I'm going to force you to move your queen. Okay, so now your queen right, is... Right, guys, that's the third time queen. the queen has had to move. That's for me. And he got to develop so another would piece. would you like to move your queen? Think about it for just a moment in the back. Yeah. Well, here's what I'm thinking. Um, I, that queen's been causing trouble, hasn't it? Every time I move the queen somewhere, he attacks it and causes me to have to move away again. And I keep moving and moving. Eventually, I'm not going to have any squares to move to, and I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be in a position where I could lose my queen, or I'm going to have to send my queen all the way back home, probably where she should have been in the first place, right? She probably shouldn't have come out this early. So it's all wasted. It's wasted movements. And, yeah, man, what would you, where would you like to move the queen? Queen to, so you would like to retreat your queen to this safe square, correct? Yeah. 
Okay. 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 So we. So I think a lot of you would like to move queen to b3. That's a good move, right? Yes. 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 Now, let's say. Hmm. You guys have me under uh, some worries here a bit. I'm a little bit concerned. What am I going to? I see a move. Anybody find a good move? Well, I don't know if it's a good move, but if you wanted to, you've got that queen on the run. What if? And the knight really shouldn't go to the side of the board, so this might be bad advice, but I'm just saying, what if the knight did something like this? Up one and two over. What does that do? You see it? Remember how the knight moves. I move here to the side of the board. Now I'm attacking the queen again. That queen is running out of options. No. Okay. I see that your queen is attacking my pawn. Correct? Correct? So I'm going to move my knight. Hey, he did it. So my knight protects the pawn and attacks your queen. Now again. Ooh. Oh, boy. Yes, young man. That queen's been trouble. What would you like to do? Okay, exactly. My knight's attacking your queen. You don't move your queen. That's for me. That's for me. Anybody know what the score so, is right now? You guys remember what the score is? It's important. How many points was the bishop worth? If you said three, that's right. And we lost a pawn, or he lost a pawn. And how many was a pawn worth? One, right? Three minus one is two, correct? All right, so that means black right now is up two points. If he gets that queen, add nine points to that. That's a lot, right? Okay, let's move how on. How many of you would like to move the queen to C3? Somewhere. Very good. <laughs> How many of you would like to take my pawn? No, no, yes. no. But I would take your queen. Oh. So, okay, I see the move queen c3 is popular with my audience. I know uh, you do? What's yeah. another move? Okay. The gentleman is making a very good point. If you had moved your queen to c3, just think about it for just a second, just a second. Remember when I fianchettoed my bishop on the long diagonal? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? <gasps> yeah. It's still there. Now, if I were to move this knight, the bishop would have what is called a discovered attack. Discovered against your queen. So we haven't done that in puzzles yet. I don't believe we've covered discovered yet. But do you guys see that? You see what he's talking about? It's kind of a neat move because you're getting like two moves at once. Let's say you were to move here. You just went over here, safely moved to there. Okay? You have to visually see this. This piece now is gone. Right? Everybody see that? So the knight moves away. Now the bishop, it's a discovered attack. Bam. Hitting the queen again. I hope you're understanding why you should not move your queen out early. Aww. Yeah. You see, this bishop is actually in ambush, is waiting in ambush, and I would capture your pawn attacking your queen with my knight, attacking your queen with my bishop, and also notice that, did I leave? I think Hikaru, Hikaru Nakamura calls these guys snipers. You know, it's kind of a bad, a bad reference, but you guys remember the man that, the young guy that tried to shoot President Trump? That's called a sniper, right? 
And then the snipers ended up taking out the guy that was trying to kill the president. This guy is that guy. The bishop is a sniper. He just sits back there in the corner and waits for somebody to do something stupid. And then he launches out from his little hidey hole right there in the corner. He launches out and he wins a piece. And sometimes you're so into his last move, you're like, oh, heck yeah, I could take a night. Cool, I got a free piece. Ha, oh, what an idiot. And you didn't even see he had this move and he's going to take your queen on the next move. So be careful. And remember, every time you move a piece, check to see what's behind it. Is it, an, is it going to be a discovered attack? All right, let's keep going. This knight in capture? Why? Why, young lady? Correct. <laughs> wow. Correct. Yes, young He's lady. in a mess, isn't he? Discovered double attack. Correct. You remember when I started the lecture and I said how important words are in chess and how you can be very, very specific. The young man made a very, very specific observation. It's a double attack, a discovered double attack. That's correct. So imagine, remember we were having a, a meal together and you were telling me about your game and how you got checkmated on the king's side or how you got checkmated on the queen's side. At this moment, you could say, after knight takes pawn, you lost a pawn to a discovered double attack, and I know exactly what you were talking about. Okay. So here's a very good time to take your move back. And I'll go with what the young man said. Remember, guys, he's giving you lots of chances here. In a real game, this isn't going to happen. You're not going to be able to take pieces back. Unless you play at chess.com and you select you playing the bot and you select, you know, I have three take backs. That is an option. I think you get one crown for that instead of three. It's something like that. Um, but yeah, you're not going to be able to take back in a real game. So just remember that. If you had played here, I would have won a pawn for free. So how about queen to a3? You're still going to get the pawn for free. Why? Could you, you capture? Now, if you notice what has happened in the game, how many? Uh, I want to say how many times? How many pieces and pawns have high moved? Right. How many pieces and pawns? <coughs> let us count. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, how many have you moved? Okay. That's powerful, so you all. we say in six. So we say in chess that I'm ahead in development. What does that mean? It means I've moved my more of my army. I've got more of my army into the game than you have. I'm ahead in development, and I'm also ahead. What is this called? Yes, young man. Young man. What is an exchange? Yes. What? Okay. What's he wanting? Correct, but we call it force. I'm ahead in force, or I'm ahead in material, right? Oh, okay, so ahead in material. A All couple right. of things have already happened from this opening. I'm ahead in force, I'm I've ahead never heard that in expression. development, and I have a very safe king. So at this moment, I'm a big favorite. I'm a big favorite to win the game. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to develop. So now I bring a bishop into play. Yes, young man. Bishop G5. Bishop G5. So because I brought a bishop into play, you brought a bishop into play, right? That was how you thought about it. Okay, that's very logical. But now it's 9-7. Right. It, it's very interesting what you just did. You did it subconsciously, but it's what I do as well. I keep a running count. Do, you, do, do many of you know who Mr. Spock is? Yes, oh, Star Trek. an actor. Yes, do you know Mr. Spock? Well, Mr. Leonard Spock Nimoy. was a very, very logical person. And he often counted time. Like, 
the captain of the ship would ask Mr. Spock what time it is, and he'd give him the exact time without looking at a watch. Because he was making a calculation of the time constantly. That's what I do. I keep, I constantly count who's ahead in the force. I constantly count who's ahead in the development. And I also count who's ahead in space. Shall we do that for a moment? Okay. I'm learning without, something here too, you guys. Without, um, and he's probably teaching right kids that are like seven. How many squares does white control? Think about it. Don't answer it right away. And how many squares does black control? I'm going to ask you in a moment. Okay. Okay, count how many squares you guys control, how many squares I control. Okay, are you ready? No. No? Not yet? Okay. I really hope you guys can't hear me chewing. I'm eating a piece of cheese right now. I'm watching this. I hope I'm not smacking. I'm trying to be quiet. Okay. <laughs> You're ready. Okay, we got one person ready. He's ready to go. You're ready. Okay, just a second. Okay, so I'm going to ask. White controls two squares. How many believe it's two? Raise your hand. How about three? How about five? I don't How know what he's more asking. More than five. Raise your hand if it's more than five. Okay. Shall we do it together? This pawn. How many? Two. two. This pawn. One. one. Two. No. two. Oh well. Zero. He's defending. You. This pawn doesn't attack any of my space, so we have two. This knight. That makes four, right? The knight controls e5 and g5, that's four. So two, four, and the bishop? Six. I've never seen anybody explain it like this, guys. Nine. Nine. You guys control nine. And I'm 55. How many is black? That's me, the good guy. How many does the good no guy training. control? You're a I control, how many did you say? More than four. More than four. Can I? One. One? One? How many squares does this knight control? Three. Three. Of your space, how many does it control? Two. How many does this pawn control? None. How about this knight? So we're up to four. How about this bishop? One, two, three. Three? Two. Ah, that's a very good point. The bishop is on the g4 square, but how many squares does the bishop attack? The bishop attacks h3 and f3, but we don't say the bishop attacks the square it's on. Okay, so this is very interesting. So it actually turns out that I control two, four, six. Now, I'm going to take your knight. We're going to play a couple of more moves and then we'll stop. I take your knight. Do you guys want to move your king? No. You want to move a rook? No. How about your queen? No. Do you want to take my bishop? Yes. Yeah. How? How can you guys take it? Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. We got a, a we got trade. a bishop. Yeah. The only problem with this, you guys, uh, white is in a mess. Look at this now. By doing that, you just moved your pawn out of the way. I mean, all of us would do that. It's a free bishop, right? We're go we have to take it back. He took one of our pieces. We've got to take back. But I I just wanted you to see how dangerous that is opening up this file like this it's just really really dangerous especially if he can clear out some pieces and start getting the rook in the game so the rook can attack or he gets this queen over here into the game um you know something like this and he's eyeing down on that square so very dangerous you guys did good for a change <laughs> you trade a how much is the knight worth? Three. 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 Three.
<laughs> now we've got a mathematician in the class, an accountant, an economist. Okay, this is a very, very fundamental thing we're going to talk about now. Do you, are you aware of what means doubled pawns? We can see the double pawns. The pawn on F3 and the pawn on F2 are on the same file. So we say that white has doubled F pawns. Very, very clear. And because you have doubled F pawns, do you see that your, queen, your king, pardon me, it's a little bit weakened? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm very happy that your queen is over here, but I don't like the fact that my knight isn't doing so much. So I'm going to bring my knight back with the idea of bringing it here, and I want to attack your double F pawn. Do you see how I'm doing that? Mm. And now what would you... What could you do? I would love to go right here attacking your queen, but I'm afraid <laughs> you would take my knight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you were trying to trick me. Ah, tricky. <laughs> now, he is so patient with these kids. He's really good. That would be my move. But the young gentleman had a different idea for me as well. Okay, what he suggested I might do is I might take your pawn. And we'll take your knight. And then when you take my knight, we do with the double pawn. That's very good because good. you wanted That's to good. undouble your pawn. Now what yep. would you suggest? That's good. And you take our pawn on D. Correct. With the bishop attacking your queen and winning the rook, except for one small tiny detail. You guys see it? What's queen. that? Yay! Yes. Good job. Queen will take my bishop. Yep. Well, that's a lousy idea. <laughs> yeah, that guy wants to bishop take it. In a knight. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much indeed. Well, he got I'm excited, not going didn't to he? fall for that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Not one <laughs> chance. I'm going to retreat my knight. Okay, you guys are good. Yes, young man, what would you do? Okay. Bishop takes f6. Would you like to make the trade? It's an even trade, even Stevens. No, it's not. No, it's not. Why? I'm not going to do it. It's three and three. No, you can take with those one of those. Okay, but it's still an even trade. But you, but you can still take. Okay. <laughs> ah, that boy doesn't want to lose his piece at all. Okay, let's just look at this for a moment. The bishop on g5 controls two squares, correct? Yes. f6 and h6. When your bishop takes my knight and I recapture your bishop, how many squares does your bishop now control? None. It's gone. It's gone. There's no more control. Correct. But let's go back for a moment. In this moment, how many squares of. We got your seven more minutes, guys. Does Hang my in there. Bishop control? Yeah. Ten. Ten. Ten? What? Five. <laughs> five. 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 Five? Think about it. Think Two. about it. Let me repeat my question. No. How many squares? How many squares of yours does this bishop control? Two. It doesn't. Well, what square does it attack? That one. Two. That one. Why? It's blocked by the knight. That one. But that's Nine. my square. It's not your square. This is my space. This is your space. Mm, I see what he's saying. Okay. Remember out in the beginning, guys, how he he said, "Let's draw a line." I, I was getting confused. Like, what what is he talking about? He was saying, you know, right here. This is the equator line, basically. And so he's saying, all of this and this, you know, all of this belongs to you. And this is your side of the board. And then I'm on my side of the board, right? Five, six, seven, and eight. So he's got these four back here. And you've got your four back here. Okay, you guys follow? I got lost there. I couldn't, I, I was trying to understand what he was saying. Now I get it. Why? Show me. Remember, Show guys, me that's why they.
That's why I call the chessboard ape. I'm just like a big monkey, man. I'm not very, I'm not very smart. It takes me a little while to get things. <laughs> okay, just a second. This bishop attacks this square, correct? Yes, but that's my square. It's not your square. Wouldn't this we say he defends that square? F8, correct? Yes, but it's coming on. Your square protects it. Protects your eight. Square. Your square. So it doesn't yeah. attack any of your square. Now, let's just imagine that you take my knight. Okay. I recapture with the bishop. Yeah. Now, hold on, hold on. Just a second, just a second, just a second. We've made an even trade, but how many squares does your bishop now control? Now, after the trade, how many of your squares does my bishop now control? Three. Okay, guys, let's look at it. He asked the question, right? So we split the board down here again. I want to really get something out of these videos, even if they seem kind of like juvenile. He asked a good question. I've never thought of this. So how many squares now does the bishop control of white's squares? Right? Wouldn't we start here? These two, because they're over this line, right? This square is still his. I'm sure that's what he's talking about. How many think it's two? Raise your hands. Me. That's wrong. How many think it's, it's three? Wrong? Raise your hands. Oh, 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 guys. How many? You know what I didn't see? Oh, duh. Well, because technically... Once we cross the line here and into here, we're attacking that square too, right? So it's these two plus this one. I think that's what he's getting into. Okay, my bad. I think it's, now this is tricky. Four. Oh, I think it is. Why is it four? Why is it? It's been attacking the H4 square. It attacks H4, D4. C3, B2. So it attacks four squares. Oh, so you oh, oh. really help me with this trade. Do you see that now? Oh, uh, okay. Even with the pawn on it. Well, then why not count the rook in the corner, too? I don't know. That's a good analogy, but okay. I thought he meant open squares attacking. All right. Apparently, I'm slow. That's Big, true. Stupid monkey. That is a consideration, but you broke my fortress, but you have to weigh it about... You have to, chess is a little bit about negotiation, right? You get me, I get you, but you also have to think about the result, the result. We should realize that as we calculate the force, the time, the element of space, that that trade actually favors me because you're getting rid of an active bishop and you're developing a passive bishop on an active diagonal. How many of you know the word passive? Passive. Young man, what do you think passive means? Peaceful. That's a nice word, isn't it? So my bishop at the moment is a peaceful bishop, and then it's going to become an active bishop. So, we're, so how many of you would... After this long discussion, how many of you would now like to trade your bishop for the knight? Ah, well, we learned something. So we're going to make a different move. How many of you would like to move your knight? Yes. Be a good start. Bring your pieces out. Where would you like to move your knight? To D2 or to C3? C3. Young C3. Lady. C3. Yeah. Okay. Now, after remember, because we want to move our knights and we want to get to the center of the board so we can take up more squares. Remember when he had his knight off to the side of the board? Um, you might have, if you saw the one um, explainer video that we did on chess.com and they said knights on the rim are dim, or some people will say knights on the rim are grim. Yeah, okay, because they don't control that many squares. Got one square, but this square, two, three, and four, right? And when you're in the center of the board, we had eight. So when your knights are in the center of the board, like he's Knight got, C3, we're better off. I have a really, really, really good move. And I want you guys to try to imagine what I would like to play I think if I, I were black. D4? Which I am black. 
So what's a really good move? What's a move that you guys got to worry about now, young man? Um, knight, your knight to g4 because then, then the bishop will be attacking your, our knight. But if I move my knight to g4, can't you take my knight? Yeah. <gasps> But you win my knight. That's not good for me. No, I don't know uh, what he's going to say here, but I would see, I'm seeing this. Knight d4. Don't look like any piece gonna take, can take me. And if I get an opportunity, my next move is going to be like this. Right there. And, do, and if you see that, you all, what that just did, that created another fork, right? Because attacking the queen and attacking the rook at the same time. So if I can make it that far, and I get the fork, he has to move the queen away, and I win the rook. That's a little more of an advanced move, and I'm not sure that's where he's going with the kids, but let's see. Ah, but uh, who? Somebody came up with a real good move just a moment ago. Not that knight move, but another knight move. What's another good move? So this knight on c6 controls how many squares? Two. d4 and b4. Where could this knight move? It can only move to the square it controls. If it goes to b4, is that a good move? No. Okay, so what's the other good square? Yes? D4. Okay, correct. Knight Good job. D4. Now, after I've moved my knight to D4, he said it D4, with authority, didn't he? What have I done? I made a fork, correct? Yeah. I'm attacking two pawns, correct? Yeah. Which pawns am I attacking? And I know the best one. Who F3. Because and if C2. I capture this pawn, my knight will attack your queen and rook, correct? Right. What's the other pawn that I'm attacking, though? The and if I take that pawn, what will my knight be forking in that case? King. 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 Correct. I'm forking. So in this position, this knight is about to cause some very serious damage. I wonder why you go that way, though. You're going to lose I'd rather have a rook or queen. with a result that there you'll lose either the queen or rook, yeah. or you're going to lose this pawn which will attack your king with check. I know you, I, I think you're going to do that. <laughs> okay, so at this point we're going to stop and we're going to say you guys came really, really, really close to almost winning. <laughs> A really, 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 really close. But, but what we learned, what we learned is what was I trying to do against the class? What was I trying to do? I was trying to develop my army I was trying to control this. Look what happened in the end, by the way. I control. And when that knight landed on the d4 square, what, what square is that called? Peace. Sweet center. So I developed my knight into the sweet center. Sweet and center. It came That's another phrase. Effect. So what I was trying to do. What have we learned so far? So we got sweet center. I've never heard that expression. I don't know if that's from Yasser, if that's a term that we use in chess. And the other one was a head in force and development. Of course, I know development, but I've never heard the expression a head in first. A head in force. So we've learned that sweet center and a head in force. Was to develop my army, control. Now don't flip center, away yet, you guys. Just let him finish. Safety. And Sometimes I was you always learn things in the end. Conscious of how many spaces I was winning and what the material was. And every chess game, every grandmaster in the world does exactly what we did just now. Wow, amazing. And you know what, guys, too? Um, 
when you're up like that, let's say you you've got one of his major pieces. Think about how simple it is at that point to just start trading down. Right? You could actually just start trading down and eventually he's going to run out of pieces and you're going to be up in pieces and you'll be able to checkmate him. So anyway, I hope you guys had fun doing that. Uh, this is Yasser Sirwan. I'm not sure if he says Sirwan or Sir Sirwan. I I'm not sure how they pronounce it, but Grandmaster Yasser Sirwan. And Yasser, you'll see sometimes if you guys ever watch some of the tournaments, you'll notice that Mac. Uh, I'm sorry that he um, not Magnus. <laughs> you'll notice that Yasser um, is one of the commentators. So if you guys ever watch. Um, Anything on YouTube where you're watching a tournament, you might find Yasser there. I'm going to go ahead and create a playlist now where we're going to have some beginner lessons like that, and we can go over them together. Um, I know that you could just watch it on your own, but sometimes maybe Yasser doesn't say something that I, you know, th that I might say. Um, he may not go into it um, deep enough because he's a grandmaster, and once you get to a certain level at the grandmaster level. You forget that people that are just starting in the game don't even know what you're talking about. And I think that's why he started off with language, right? That's why he was talking about terms and, and uh, knowing the vocabulary. Uh, the other one we learned was al the algebraic expressions, you know, like A1, A2, A3, A4, all of that sort of stuff. Um, but anyway, so I just try to add a little bit more and, um, and I want to go through it myself and start all over at the very beginning, just like I'm in your shoes. I want to see what I missed. And I'm telling you, at 55 years old, and I, I learned several different things today about the board and how it was set up. And um, I got a lot out of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we'll see you guys on the next one. Look for me to be making our next video. Uh, we talked about how to move the pieces. Then the next one's going to be how to set up the board. And then we can actually start getting in to uh coming up with some strategies okay anyway i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you probably tomorrow take care